welcome welcome dear student in one another session myself darshana sandeep shinde from kk wag institute of pharmacy sanduri nasik today we deal with the introduction to the dosage form in that we see the monophysic liquid dosage form let's start our session learning outcomes of our today's sessions are after watching this video students should be able to understand what is meant by syrup elixirs linters gargles mouthwash throat paints liniments lotions sprays nasal drops and ear drops let's see first of all we see the liquid dosage forms what is meant by liquid dosage forms liquid stage form are meant for the internal parenteral or external use they are available in the two forms monophysic dosage form and biophysic dosage form today we deal only the monophysic liquid dosage form well, first of all we see the classification of the liquid dosage form liquid dosage forms are mainly divided into two types these are the monophysic liquid dosage forms and the biophysic liquid dosage forms further this monophysic liquid dosage form is divided into two parts it is used for the internal use and external use internal use consist of a syrups elixirs external use consist of a gargles in a mask mouthwash etc in these biophysic liquid dosage forms consist of a suspension and emulsion we see later on first of all we see the monophysic liquid dosage forms monophysic liquid dosage forms are represented by a true or a colloidal solutions the components of a solution which are present in a large quantity is known as a solvent whereas the component present in a small quantity it is termed as the solute that means if we take on the liquid and if we add in that the specific kind of drug that liquid is a solvent here because that is present in the large quantity and that kind of a drug is called as the solute because that is present in a small quantity water is mainly used as a solvent for majority of the monophysic liquid dosage forms a solution is a homogeneous because of the solute is an ionic or molecular form of the subdivision uh, mostly the solutions are known as the homogeneous if uh, where uh, because the solute added in the solution to make the homogeneous is mainly of the ionic or the molecular form if solution or the solute is not in a ionic or molecular form it is not get uh, homogeneous or we do not get the homogeneous solution in case of the colloidal solution the solutes are present in aggregates although they cannot be seen by the naked eye or under ordinary microscope for that kind we need the electronic microscope then we see the monophysic liquid dosage forms and detailed classification monophysic liquid dosage forms are firstly divided into liquids for the internal use in that syrups elixirs linters drops and drops are used then second class is the liquids for the external use in that liquids to be applied on the skin these are the liniments and the lotions and external liquids or external monophysic liquid dosage forms used for the or meant for the body cavities these are the gargle throat paints mouthwash eye drops eye lotion ear drops nasal drops sprays these are for the mouth cavities ear cavities and the nasal cavities then we see the first uh, dosage form uh, or first internally used dosage form that is the syrups syrups simple syrups is a saturated solution of the sucrose in the purified water in that the concentration of the sugar or concentration of the sucrose is about 66.7% weight by volume the syrups are sweet viscous preparations these syrups are, are the aromatic preparation these are they are they are mainly prepared from the purified water in that sugar we use the specially sucrose Um, and the concentration of sucrose is sixty six point seven percent. The syrups containing medical substances are called as the medicated substance or medicated syrups. Those containing the aromatic or flavored substances are known as the flavored syrups. These are the two kinds of the syrups: medicated syrups and the flavored syrups. 
then we see the syrups are very commonly used for the following reasons it prevent the decomposition of the many vegetable substances because syrups retard the oxidation because it is partly hydrolyzed into the reducing sugars such as the lev levulose and dextrose have the high osmotic pressure which prevent the growth of the bacteria fungi and the molds which are the chief cause of the decomposition in the solution of the vegetable matter that's why if we use the syrup as a base we do not need to add any kind of the preservative they are palatable syrups are the palatable due to the sweetness of the sugar it is valuable vehicle for the administration of the nauseous substances because of its sugar, sweet taste then we see the uh, types of the syrup syrup may be divided into two groups mainly syrups prepared from the simple solution or admixture example of its syrups a syrup of ginger syrup of orange or a syrup lemon then syrup prepared by the extraction process example of its tolu syrup this is the how tolu syrup is collected then next dosage form is the elixirs elixirs these are the hydro alcoholic solution that means it is made from the water and alcohol elixirs are sweet aromatic preparation and are usually colored preparations elixirs are the ethyl alcohol in elixir there is concentration of 4 to 40% of the ethyl alcohol then water glycerin or propylene glycol sometimes glycerin used sometimes pro pro propylene glycol may be used flavoring agents syrups and preservatives the medicated elixirs usually contain very potent drug such as the antibiotics antihistamines or sedatives the flavoring elixirs are used as flavors and vehicles then we see the what is the basic difference between the syrups and the elixirs syrups are the sweet viscous concentrated or nearly saturated solution of the uh, sucrose uh, with the purified water with containing 66.7 percent weight by volume of the sugar elixirs are the clear sweeter and flavor hydroalcoholic liquid preparation intended for the oral use both for the oral use but it is for the it is a aqueous solution a uh, saturated sugar solution it is the hydroalcoholic syrups do not contain alcohol elixirs contain both water and alcohol syrups contain 66.7 percent volume by volume sucrose elixirs contain do not contain 66.7 percent volume by volume of sucrose syrups do not necessary to clear the preparations and elixirs are the clear preparations syrups are more viscous than the elixirs and elixirs are less viscous than the elix uh, sorry elixirs are more viscous than the syrup one these are the difference to uh, uh, some points of the uh, syrups and the elixirs then we see the linctus what is meant by linctus linctus are the viscous liquid and oral preparations that are generally prescribed for the relief of the cough linctus contain the medicament which have the demulsant sedative and expectorant action linctus should be taken in a small doses sip and swallowed slowly without diluting it this should be uh, taken in the mind linctus should not be diluted one with the water in order to have the maximum and prolonged effect of the medicaments linctons are very thick or linctons are thicker than the syrups one because linctons contain the emulsifying agent in that simple syrups is generally used a vehicle for most of the linctons tolu syrup is preferred in a certain cases because of its aromatic odor and flavor moreover it is believed to have the mild expectorant or expectorant actions uh, example of uh, linctus is codeine uh, linctus bpc or codeine phosphate is a marketed preparation available in the market then we see the next dosage form that is the drops these are the liquid preparations made for the oral administration the oil soluble vitamins such as the vitamin a d concentrated fish liver oil or concentrated uh, different kinds of fish liver oil are presented by the drops uh, administered in this form since these preparation contain a potent medicament and dose must be measured accurately there are following two methods are commonly used for this purpose use of, of a dropper which is accurately or graduated uh, in a fraction of 
milliliters and second is the use of pre calibrated copper in which a number of drops equivalent to the prescribed dose uh, of a particular preparation being administered is known uh, all in all drops should be taken in a way of in a small doses and an accurate one doses and that care should be taken while we administer the drops the size of the drop depends upon the surface tension viscosity density and the temperature then next dosage form is the liniments liniments we are applied on the skin liniments are liquid and semi liquid preparation made for the application to the skin liniments are usually applied to the skin with friction and rubbing action if you use the liniments it required a friction and rubbing action uh, liniments are maybe alcoholic or oily solution or it may become an emulsion alcohol help in the penetration of the medicament into the skin and also increases the counter irritant or rub efficient action though it contain the alcohol that's why it uh, irritate or it penetrate to the skin but uh, and it give the counter irritant and rubia efficient action that's why it is not applied on the broken skin arachis oil is used in some liniments which is spread more easily on the skin soap is also included as an ingredient in some of the liniments which help in the easy application of the liniment on the skin generally liniments contain medicament possessing the analgesic rubia efficient smoothing or counter irritant or stimulating property a liniment should not be applied on the broken skin because it's excessive it causes or it produces the excessive irritation though it have the counter irritant and rubia efficient action the next dosage form is the lo lotions lotions are the liquid preparation made for the external application without friction these are these preparation do not require any kind of the friction they are applied to direct skin with the help of the some absorbent material such as the cotton wool or a gauze cotton gauze soak in it lotions may be used for the local action for cooling soothing or protective purpose they generally prescribe for the antiseptic action example of its calamine lotion uh, we can use the lotion on the uh, wounds or broken skin it do not produces any kind of the irritation then next dosage form is the gargles gargles are aqueous solutions used to prevent or to treat the throat infections they are usually available in the concentrated form with the direction for dilution with the warm water before use gargles these are the preparation are in the concentrated form and we need to dilute it before use it and we should always prepare the warm water they are brought into the intimate contact with the mucous membrane of the throat and they are allowed to remain in the contact with it for a few seconds before they thrown out of the body or mouth cavity they are used to relieve the soreness in the mild throat infection in the mild throat infection we can also use the gargles phenol thymol is generally present in the small concentration for the antibacterial activity the potassium chlorate is included in a gargle for its weak astringent effect to tone up a relaxed throat for the to tone up the relaxed throat we use the potassium chlorate in the most of the gargle preparation it is also stimulate the secretion of the saliva which relieves the dryness example of its phenol gargle potassium chlorate and the phenol gargles then the next dosage form is the mouthwash these are the aqueous solution with a pleasant taste and odor used to make the clean and deodorize the buccal cavity buccal cavity means mouth cavity generally they contain the antibacterial action alcohol glycerin sweetening agent flavoring agent and the coloring agents then we see the difference between the mouthwash and the gargles mouthwash are the aqueous solutions with the pleasant taste or smell for the refreshing effect whether the gargles are the aqueous solutions to prevent and treat the throat infection both are the aqueous solutions but gargles are used to prevent the throat infections mouthwash used to clean and deodorize the buccal cavity 
Gargles in the they are used in the mild throat infections used to relieve the soreness of the throat. Mouthwash they are used for the rinsing the mouth cavity. Gargles brings during the or brings drug into the intimate contact with the mucous membrane of the throat. In the gargle there is the intimate contact between drug and the throat membrane. Mouthwash are more used for the cosmetic purpose. Gargles are used for the medicinal purposes. Mouthwash contain the antibacterial agents, coloring and flavoring agents. Gargles it contain the antibacterial agent like phenol, thymol, astringent, potassium chlorate etc. Mouthwash examples are compound sodium chloride mouthwash, Listerine it's a brand name of another word product. Gargles are available in the form of the phenol gargles, potassium chloride gargles and betadines. This is the difference between the mouthwash and the gargles. Then we see the throat paints. Throat paints are the viscous liquid preparation used for the mouth and the throat infections. Glycerin is mostly used as a base because, or be, uh, because of its viscosity. Being a viscous, it adheres to the mucous membrane. That's why glycerin is used as a vehicle in the throat paint because it is a viscosity. Uh, it has a great uh, more and more viscosity and it, it adheres to the mucous membrane for a long period. It possesses a sweet taste also. This is the throat paint. Then we see the sprays. Spray are the preparation of the drug in the media which may be aqueous, alcoholic or the glycerin. Uh, different types of sprays are available, aqueous, alcoholic and glycerin sprays. They are applied to the mucous membrane of the nose, throat with an automizer. There is an automizer which is used to spray out. It is your uh, nose sprays, throat sprays are also available. Throat sprays must be spread from the special type of the atomizer known as the nebulizers. Throat sprays are used for the administration of the throat sprays and there is a specific type, or type of atomizer which is known as the nebulizer which removes the large droplet of a baffling system. Only a fine droplets are required so that they reach to the lungs. Example of it adrenaline and atropine spray compound BPC. Then we see the inhalations. These are the liquid preparation containing the volatile substances and are used to relieve the congestion, inflammation of the respiratory tract. They are directly inhaled and goes into the respiratory tract for its action. The inhalation containing the volatile substances which are volatile at the temperature may be replaced or may be placed on an absorbent pad or anchor chief to inhale them. Sometimes if there is a no specific kind of a, a, a automizing machine, uh, at that time these are spread on an anchor chief or cotton gauze or cotton uh, and uh, uh, place um, uh, and inhale them and used to inhale them. In other cases, inhalations are added to the hot but not boiling water. Uh, um, uh, sometimes inhalations can also be used into the hot water but not the boiling water, not exceeding about 65 degrees Celsius water, not more than that temperature and vapors are inhaled for about 10 minutes. Example of it, best example of it, uh, in a house we use, uh, if anybody has the uh, 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 nose infection or it, it should have the uh, uh, some kind of antibacterial infection at that time in house we use the VIX or we use the VIX as inhalant uh, and it place it in, uh, in a hot water and it take a steam of that that is a, a example of the inhalation also the next is uh, we see the eye drops eye drops these are the sterile solution or suspension of a drug that instilled put into drops by uh, into the eye with the dropper a specific type of dropper is used to uh, place the drug into the our eye cavity uh, the eye drops are usually made up of the aqueous vehicles it should be sterile isotonic with the lacrimal secretions buffered 
and free from the foreign particles eye drops usually made from the aqueous vehicles water is used as a vehicle but it is a sterile one and it should be sterile our preparation is sterile isotonic with the lacrimal secretion our lacrimal secretion has the ph of 7.3 that means our solution is isotonic with that kind of the ph and it is buffered it should not alter its ph it, it should be buffered one so the uh, some uh, you know phosphorus buffer or boric acid is a uh, preferred buffering agent in that free from the foreign particles to avoid the irritation to the eye a suitable preservative like the phenyl mercuric nitrate 0.002%, benzyl conium chloride 0.01% and the chlorhexidine acetate 0.1% may be used to prevent the bacterial or the fungal growth. Eye drops are usually contain a substance having antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, anesthetic and meiotic properties. Eye drops are generally prepared by dissolving the medicament in the aqueous vehicle containing one of the prescribed antimicrobial substances and the other the other preservatives specified in the individual monographs. We see the uh, following precautions are uh, required to be observed while using the eye drops. If the eye drop is separate, always hold it with the uh, tip with uh, its tip down that means we should hold the eye drop with its tip down not to the upward direction never touch the drop surface never touch this dropper surface then never rinse the dropper never rinse this dropper should be never rinse never use the eye drop that having changed color if the your eye drop shows the different color uh, then never use that kind of the eye drops when the dropper is at the top of the bottle, avoid the contamination or contaminating cap when the remove. When your dropper is at top of the bottom or top of, top or of the bottom, avoid the contaminating the cap. Do not contaminate the cap when it, it is removed. After installation of the eye drops, do not close eye tightly or blink more often than the usual as this may remove the medicine from the place where it is rinsed. When you place the eye drop into your eyes, do not close your eyes very closely. Uh, if you close very uh, closely eyes, then the all the medicaments should be removed from your eyes and, uh, where, and it should not get the places where it is needed. The next dosage form is the nasal drops. There are these solutions of the drugs that are instilled into the nose with the dropper. Nowadays, uh, there is no need of dropper special, uh, specific kind of uh, such a types of the device are used for that purpose. These are usually aqueous, not oily drops, since the latter inhibit the movement of the cilia. In the nasal drop, there is a not use the oily uh, drops uh, or oil is not used as a vehicle in that because it uh, inhibited the movement of the cilia in the nasal mucosa. If it is used for the long periods, may reaches to the lungs and causes the lipoid pneumonia. That's why it is a oil uh, is a not used in the nasal drops. Nasal drops should be isotonic, having the neutral pH and the viscosity similar to the nasal secretions by using the methyl cellulose. Yeah, example of it, if it is in nasal drops, BPC, nasal drops should be isotonic with the, having the neutral pH uh, and its viscosity, uh, sim, its, its viscosity is similar as that of our nasal secretions. And the solution is clarified by the filtration transferred to the final container, which are then closed to include, uh, ex exclude the microorganisms. Then the sterilization is done by the autoclaving uh, or by the heating with the bactericide at the uh, 98 degree to 100 degree Celsius for the 30 minutes or by filtration through the bacteria proof filtration. Uh, if we uh, two types of sterilization use autoclaving with the 98 to 100 degree Celsius for 30 minutes or by the filtration, bacteria proof filtration is also used for its filtration. Then the eye drops. Then the nasal drop sh should be packed in a neutral glass container. 
then suitable or a suitable plastic container the glass droppers are made up of a neutral glass the treat are uh, it treats are much made up of the rubber which are compatible with the antimicrobial substances to be used in the formulation then we see the eye lotions these are the aqueous lotion used for the washing the eyes the eye lotions are supplied in the into uh, in a concentrated form and are required to be diluted with the warm water immediately after its use Bef sorry immediately before its use uh, eye lotions should be isotonic and free from the foreign particles to avoid the irritation to the eye the they are required to be prepared afresh and should not be stored more than the two days eye lotion should not be stored more than the two days the lotion may get contaminated with the microorganisms and this lotion uh, is a isotonic one it's free from the foreign particles and avoid irritation to the eye and they are uh, immediately di uh, diluted with the water before its use example of it sodium chloride eye lotion sodium bicarbonate eye lotion then next dosage form is the ear drops these are the solutions of the drugs that are instilled into the ear cavity with the dropper these are generally used to cleaning the ear softening the wax and for treating the mild infections the solution is generally prepared in the water glycerin propylene glycol or dilute alcohol may be used However, the vehicles like glycerin and propylene glycols are preferred one. Example of it, sodium bicarbonate airdrop BPC, phenol airdrop BPC. In this session, we cover the classification of the monophysic liquid dosage forms. We see the syrups, elixir, difference between them, linkers, gargles, mouthwash, difference between the gargles and mouthwash, throat paints, liniments, lotion, sprays, nasal drops and eardrops. Thank you very much for attending this session.